Hi students, in this video we're going to cover uh, the converse theorems and parallel lines. In this section we're going to be proving that lines are parallel. So our objectives are to recap the previous lessons, uh, learn the converse theorems, and use algebra to determine if two lines are parallel. So in the last couple of lessons, we learned five angle relationships. Um, they're going to pop up on the screen in just a moment. And it's all based upon if you have a, pa uh, a pair of lines and they're intersected by a transversal. Remember, a transversal is just a line that intersects two other lines. The first thing that we uh, determined was that if two lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. We had that if two lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then corresponding angles would also be congruent. That same side interior angles would be supplementary and same side exterior angles would also be supplementary. For all five of these statements, they are conditional statements in that if then format. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the converse of those theorems. So remember, when we did the converse of a statement, if we have uh, if P then Q, the converse of that statement is if Q then P. So for each of the statements on the previous slide, there is a converse theorem. And this lesson, again, is about using that converse theorem to prove that a pair of lines are parallel or maybe are not parallel. So to illustrate this point, we're going to look at the statement, uh, if two lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. So our first theorem is, all right, so we have the original conditional statement of if two lines are intersected by a transversal, if two lines inter by, intersected by a transversal are parallel, then corresponding angles are congruent. The converse of that statement is just going to be switching the hypothesis and conclusion to get if two corresponding angles are congruent, then the two lines intersected by the transversal are parallel. That's a true statement. And so when we look at uh, corresponding angles, we have this 65 degree angle and this 65 degree angle. These are corresponding angles. And because those angles are congruent, meaning they have the same angle measure, then we know that line P and line Q are parallel. We can mark them as parallel to each other. So that's what our converse theorem tells us. If we can establish a relationship between the angles, then we can uh, determine if the lines are parallel. The next statement, the, the next converse theorem is for the same side interior angles. So for either same side interior or same side exterior, if a pair of those angles are supplementary, then the lines that form those angles are parallel. So... In this case, we have 113 and 67, and clearly we know 113 plus 67, that's going to give us 180. And because these angles are supplementary, it's going to mean that angle L and angle, I mean, line L and line M are parallel to each other. Also true is that the alternate, I mean, same side exterior angles are congruent. This angle is 67 degrees and this angle is 113 degrees. And so the same side exterior angles are also supplementary, which means that the two lines are parallel. So this converse theorem is if two same side interior or exterior angles are supplementary, then the two lines intersected by the transversal are parallel. So our transversal is this line, we'll call it line T. And we have line L and line M. And because the same side interior angles and the same side exterior angles are supplementary, we know our lines are parallel to each other. And the last two converse theorems are for alternate interior or alternate exterior angles. So if uh, two, this should be alternate, I'm sorry, if two alternate excuse me so if two alternate exterior angles or alternate interior angles alternate interior or alternate exterior angles are supplementary then the two lines intersected by the transversal are parallel so we'll call this line m we'll call this line p and we'll call our transversal t you see that we have a pair of alternate interior angles and we also have a pair of alternate exterior angles 
because those pairs of angles are congruent, we know that line M is parallel to line P. That's the converse theorem. If the angle, if alternate exterior angles are congruent or if alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines that form those angles must be parallel to each other. And so now we're going to do a bunch of practice problems that you can expect to see on a test or a standardized state test. So first is we have to find the value of the angle that's going to make line U parallel to line V. And so we see that we have alternate exterior angles on different sides of the transversal and outside of the lines U and V. So our converse theorem says that if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the two lines U and V can be parallel to each other. So that's going to mean that this missing angle needs to be 134 degrees. And so that's how we would know U is parallel to V. So that's it. Given this angle, you find an alternate exterior angle. If it's 134, the lines are going to be parallel. Next, we're determining if these lines are actually parallel to each other. So what we see is that we have a pair of alternate interior angles and we'll, uh, this angle is 45 degrees and this angle is 47 degrees. And we can say these angles are not parallel. And they're not parallel because uh, the alternate interior angles are not congruent. And we know that uh, simply by knowing that 45, 45 degrees isn't equal to 47 degrees. That's how we know the alternate interior angles aren't congruent. They aren't the same value. So in this case, line M is not parallel to line N. Next, uh, we have this diagram where we have four lines and four congruent angles in this diagram. And we have to figure out which of these statements is true. So let's just go through each option. So is it true that M only M is parallel to N? So let's see if M is actually parallel to N. So if you look at line M and line N, then P acts as a transversal. So that means that this alternate interior angle and this alternate interior angle, they're congruent. So one thing that we know that is true is that M is parallel to line N. Remember, that symbol means parallel. So we know M is parallel to N. So that's a true statement. And so now we need to determine if P is parallel to Q. And to determine that, we're going to erase this a little bit. And so if P is parallel to Q, then hold on. All right. So if P is uh, parallel to Q, then what we have for uh, P and Q is that N is our transversal. And so what we have is a pair of um, same side interior angles. And we know that 89.9 plus 89.9, that's going to be 178 point, I'm sorry, 179. That is 179.8, which isn't equal to 180 degrees. And because these same side interior angles are not supplementary, then line P and line Q cannot be parallel to each other. So the statement that's true is that only M and N are parallel. P is not parallel to Q. So that means that C can't be true, B can't be true, and D also can't be true. We have this uh, next uh, uh, question where we have to, uh, we're told that JN and KM intersect at a point L. And we need to find the value of X that proves that JK is parallel to MN. So we're trying to show that this line is parallel to this line. So we have to establish a relationship between these three angles. So if we're looking at um, six, the 61, 39, and the 3X plus 5, then we know if you watch the video on vertical angles, we know that this angle is a vertical angle. Um, and... 
you should have learned that the three angles of a triangle add to equal 180. So that makes this angle 80 degrees because 61 plus 39 is 100 and that angle is 80. So now we know that angle M in L is, should be congruent to angle LJK. And that's going to be because these are alternate interior angles because they are between lines M and N and on different sides of this transversal uh, in J. So then we need to solve the equation 3x plus 5 equals 80. And we can subtract 5 from both sides. So we get 3x equals 75. Then divide both sides by 3. And we get x equals 25 degrees. So 25 is going to be the value of x that makes these angles, uh, I mean, makes these lines parallel to each other. Next, we have a diagonal walkway cuts through a park bordered by two parallel streets. And the parks department plans to add an additional walkway as indicated by the dashed line segment in the figure. And we need to find the value of X. So it's relevant that we have two parallel streets because we know that this angle is 132. And so if this street is parallel to this other street, then we know the value of this angle. Because the streets are parallel and these two angles represent same side interior angles, we know that we'll call this angle Y for a moment. Then we know that 132 degrees plus angle Y has to equal 180 degrees. And we can subtract 132 from both sides and we get that Y has to be 48 degrees. So now we know Y has a value of 48 degrees, but we don't stop there. Because we have a right triangle, we know that X and Y are complementary angles, which means they add to equal eight, uh, 90. So then we have X plus 48 equals 90 degrees, and we can subtract 48 from both sides, and we get X equals 42 degrees. So now we know the value of X is 42, and so, so we, uh, we finished our question. But notice that we use uh, the parallel line information just to get us a step closer to actually solving for X. So sometimes that's not our end goal to just prove that the lines are parallel or find an angle measure using parallel lines. That just enables us to go one step farther with our um, problem solving. And so the last question we have is we need to find the value of X that makes the lines parallel. And again, we have a pair of alternate interior angles. And if two lines are going to be parallel, the alternate interior angles need to be congruent. So our equation should be 14x minus 6 equals 12x plus 12. And maybe we add 6 to both sides. So we get 14x equals 12x plus 18 and then we can subtract 12x from both sides and we get 2x equals 18 and then we divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals 9 so you get x equals 9 as your answer remember i told you that anytime you solve an equation you're always going to get an answer so you should check your answer to make sure it makes sense so 12 times 9 which is 108 plus 12 is going to equal 120 and then 14 times 9, which is 126, minus 6 also equals 120 degrees. So we indeed do get a pair of congruent alternate interior angles. And so that's how we know lines U and V will be parallel. All right. So in this video, we covered the five converse theorems of uh, for uh, parallel lines, we have the converse theorem for the alternate interior and alternate exterior angles, which again says that if two alternate interior or two alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines cut by the transversal are parallel to each other. We have the converse of the same side interior or exterior angle theorem, which says that if two same side interior angles or same side exterior angles are supplementary, then the two lines intersected by the transversal are parallel. And we have the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, which is if two corresponding angles are congruent, 
then the two lines intersected by the transversal are also parallel. Thanks for watching.